You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Commander 2019 preview season, and we are here again. This is an amazing week for us because we are showing you all the deck lists for the Commander 2019 decks on the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. Yes, you have seen some of the new cards. Mm -hmm. I think all the new cards have been previewed. Well, all except one, ah. because... Uh, in addition to revealing the rest of the deck list, all of the reprints that are coming in this Jeskai flashback Mystic Intellect deck, this deck also includes our preview card. Very exciting. But of course, before we get into it, we must say that if you are looking to buy Commander 2019, maybe get your hands on our preview card or any of the singles or sealed product, head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. That's our affiliate link. If you just go over there, use that link, buy some product, you are supporting the show directly, and we can't thank you enough for it. Yeah, you can pre-order all of this stuff right now. And while you're there, you might check out Ultra Pro products or at your LGS anywhere else in the world. You know, Ultra Pro gets all gets to do all of the themed stuff for mm -hmm. every set. They have the Commander 2019 playmats. They've got sleeves and deck boxes and all kinds of stuff. So you can have your battlefield really match. Yeah. Yeah, you can look nice. cool. You, you And be cool. Not and just look cool. cool. It makes you cool. <laughs> You know who, a, a, a bunch of other cool people are over at the Send final way man. to support our show. That's patreon.com slash command zone. We love our patrons. They really are the core support group for our content, all of our content. And uh, you know what? We call it one lucky patron every single week on the show, or in this case, four times this week That's alone, right. maybe even five. <laughs> so this week's, today's episode is dedicated to, to David Ryder. David, you rock. All right. Okay, so, yeah, let's start with our preview card here. This is the last new card in the deck that hasn't been spoiled yet, mm -hmm. and it's a really good one. It's definitely a Josh Lee Kwai card, I would say that much. Okay, well, then I'll read it. Yes. It is Elsha of the Infinite. Wow. It is two blue, red, and white, so five mana total for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature, Jin Monk has prowess, which means whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It also says you may look at the top card of your library anytime. So you can just look at that and cool. just know what it is. Cool, cool. You may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land card, and you may cast it as though it had flash. Whoa. Hey. I like it, that last part a lot. Yeah. It gives you a lane line slash Vidalcan Orrery effect on your non-creature, non-lands, which is, again, in a spell-based Jeskai deck, exactly what you want. Only, it's like, uh, yeah, it's a Vidalcan Orrery stapled to a um, future site oh. enchantment <laughs> stapled to a something that only allows, allows you to cast non-creature, non-lands. So there's some hoops in there, but you get rewarded. Yeah, uh, the basic idea of this, though, is if this is on the battlefield, your hand size is plus one. It's always increased by one. Uh, and it could be more, too, because be more. one of the things I think that's hard to see about this future site, Experimental Frenzy, that type of card, if you play the top card of your library... And then now you can look at the top card of your library. If it's another card that's a hey. non-creature, non-land, you can play that. So sometimes this can draw you, quote unquote, three, four cards. Yeah, and play them as well at instant speed. So there's a lot of tricky things going on with the deck. So let's talk about some of the cards that we think are going to work well with Elsha. But in general, I think this card's pretty powerful. Yeah, I do think this card's, I mean, it's card advantage, right? Yeah. Um, and I actually think this is probably the correct card when you open up this box and play it to use as the commander. I think of the, well, the morph deck, Yeah, we said, oh, you should play. Kadena. Yeah, the who's on the box. The character that's on the box for this deck, the Jeskai deck, is Savine, the Chronoclasm. And Savine sort of rewards you for flashing back spells out of your graveyard, forks them, basically. That's a good effect, but I actually think Elsha have, you know, we've played the decks a few times now, and it seems to play better with Elsha at the helm because it's just raw card advantage, yeah. which is just, you don't have to set it up. Yeah, and, and like Kadena has that card advantage stapled to the card as well. Uh, Savin, not so much. It requires a bit more setup. With Elsha, you're doing the thing that this deck wants to do, which I think is be re very reactive and, and take its time and figure out what it wants to do so, so as to not rush into battle because it's a Jeskai Mystic Intellect deck. We're so, not brawling here. Yeah, so before we sort of talk about the rest of the contents of the deck, we thought it'd be fun to just look at Elsha in a vacuum as a card in Commander as a whole and what other cards we might put in an Elsha deck if we were to build one from scratch. Yep. Uh, this first one, well, you were the one that called it out, so you should probably read it. Uh, okay. So the first one that we're going to talk about is Soothsaying. It's one blue for an enchantment. 
you can pay three and two blue, so three blue blue, and shuffle your library. So if you look at the top card of your library and you don't like it, you can just shuffle yeah. and hopefully get a better new card. But the next ability is really the one you want to look at. You can pay X mana, generic mana, and then look at the top X cards of your library and put them back in any order. For X? So you're like, oh, I'm just going to spend three mana. I'm going to rearrange the top three cards, and I'm going to put you know, a non-creature, non-land card mm-hmm. there. I think what can happen with Elsha, well, two things can happen. You look at the top card of your library, it's a land. Can't do anything there, and that's she's not providing any advantage from that card. Mm-hmm. Or you look at the top card of your library, and it's a creature, right? and you can't do anything there. So you're going to want to be able to filter past those and sort of rearrange. Now you can say, oh, well, I want that creature, but I just want to draw it next turn. So I'm going to put something else on top, which I can cast, and then that'll cause me to draw the creature. Yeah, not not to mention, you can, yeah, like that, you can always hide the card that you want to keep on top as a surprise to everyone. It's really hard to interact with people's decks uh, in general. That's an effect we never really see in Commander. So being able to be like, you know what, I'm going to keep this Psych Rift on top for just a few more turns and not reveal to anyone that's there, pretty, pretty cool. Um, another card we should talk about is a c- sort of classic combo with Future Sight. It's Sensei's Divining Top. Right. Uh, probably the best card in an Elsha deck because its interaction is can be, first of all, draw your entire deck. Mm-hmm. Because Elsha will allow you to cast the top off the top of your deck, right? Well, the tops, first of all, the first ability allows you to rearrange the top three cards, uh, which is useful just to put the right cards there. But the second ability, you tap... You draw the top card of your library, and then you put the top on top of your deck, which means you can now cast it with Elsha and then do that again, and you could just draw a bunch of cards. Now, that's going to cost you one mana each time, right? Mm -hmm. So if you use, we have listed a bunch of cards that reduce the cost of top to zero. Yeah, so the new Ugin does it. Foundry Inspector, Ethereum Sculptor, a lot of cards in Magic's history wants to make uh, artifacts cost cheaper, and they usually don't come with the text, too, of like, if it costs zero, then it costs one instead. In this case, the top comes out for free. You also get infinite prowess triggers, or or your deck's full of prowess triggers, sorry, uh, for Elsha, and you also get your storm count up to a billion. So from that, if you're able to just assemble two cards, which is the top and then one of the mana reductions, you get your entire deck, and then you're probably going to be able to just, I don't know, empty the warrants for a billion. If Aetherflux Reservoir is in there somewhere, oh, then right. that, yeah, that's that the end too. of the game or stuff like that. Like, it's pretty easy to win from the point of, like, I drew my entire deck on a turn. Yeah. Infinite Prowess Triggers I didn't even think of. So you can swing and kill one person that way. Yeah. <laughs> Lab Maniac. You know, there's lots of ways that this goes off. But just by itself, that that's a very powerful interaction. Um, and Future Sight, obviously, is very hard to cast as well. So having that sort of combo there is a nice, I think, like, backup so this Just is a cool case. card you found, which yeah. I've never even heard of. Never heard of. It's but it's not... <laughs> actually awesome in this deck. Yeah, so it's Penance, uh, two and a white for a three mana enchantment. Uh, it says, put a card from your hand on top of your library, and then this is to activate an ability, which is the next time a black or red source of your choice would deal damage this turn, prevent that damage. Now that, all you need to be able to put a card from your hand back on top of your library is to be able to find a black or red source on the battlefield that you can target with penance. Yeah. They don't need to be in combat. They don't need to be doing damage. Now, that might be upside, but you can also target uh, Elsha with this. She's red. She's red. And if you're not playing on swing with her or if you're doing this post-combat, you're going to be able to just instant speed, put a card back on top of your library at any time, which seems really, really handy. Uh, you don't want to do this a bunch, obviously, because then you're just losing cards out of your hand. Well, I mean, there's if you cast it right away, it's the same as casting out of your hand, but it basically makes Elsha a Vidal can for yeah. that stuff in that moment. Gives it flash immediately, which yep. actually is super valuable. I think one of the things you can run into if you build this deck is you've drawn the cards that you don't want to cast out of your hand. You yeah. want to cast them at instant speed. So, penance. And it has a lot of upside because black and red cards preventing damage from them mm-hmm. is worth something, right? Somebody swinging at you yeah, with a dragon a or something. Source, or yeah. it could be like a lightning bolt-esque effect or a burn effect. You can be like, nah, no thanks. And I'll put a card back on top of my library too. Yeah, and then I'll just cast that card. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that interaction. That's pretty cool. And a card I've just never, ever seen on the battlefield before. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it really does. It has It's like reconnaissance. It's one of those cards you're like, why would you ever play this? And then you realize, ah, it combos very well. Now, of course, you're going to want all the top deck manipulation cards in the deck, right? So anything that's like a brainstorm type of ability, mm-hmm. lets you draw cards, put cards back on. Uh, scroll Rack is another really good one. Jason the Mind favorites. Sculptor, stuff yep. like that. Yep. Uh, there are lands, Academy Ruins, and Hall of Helios Generosity. Oh, yeah. the, the the Hall came out recently, but these allow you to put cards back on top of your library. From uh, your from graveyard. Your graveyard, so you're able to recur them. And this deck is already about getting a ton of value out of the graveyard. Yeah, I, I feel like Academy Ruins is a really good one. There's got to be some crazy type of... Well, let's say someone is... Well, Mind Slaver. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I don't want to talk about it. I don't on. want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, want to yeah. talk about it. Uh, if the top somehow gets removed. 
Right. You can then get you the can top get back. back. Yeah, get that combo back going. And with Hall of Heliod's generosity now, you could build it around enchantments if you really, really want to. Like Although penance. I think I think artifact is probably going to be the way to go with Elsha. Yeah. Um, just seems very powerful. Yep. Uh, um, oh, Mastery oh. of the Unseen. I like this card a lot. It's a really cheap enchantment, and you can just manifest the top card of your library. So if it does happen to be a land or something that you can't draw slash play with Elsha, you can just get rid of it. Yeah, you can kind of, yeah, that's a way to s- sort of cycle past it, mm-hmm. as it were. There's a whole bunch of cards in Magic's history that sort of prevent all players from, like, drawing cards and right. stuff like that. So this is the mean way I think you can go. If you're playing cards off the top of your library and, you're, and you know, your commander allows you to do that, one of the ways to take advantage is to stop everybody else and yourself, you know, symmetrical effect, from drawing cards. Because you're like, well, you can't get any more, but I still can because I can play the top card in my library. So Yeah, yeah one this, is better than zero, right? Yeah, so this next one is pretty mean, but it's, it's a good card with Elsha as far as power level. Possessed Portal. It costs eight. But you could cast... It's an artifact, so you could cast it with Elsha. Speed, yeah, and you, you can get up to eight lands and yeah. just hold it all up. Um, I feel like you're never tapping out with this deck anyway. Until the end step before you turn yeah. or if something happens, right? Uh, it's an artifact, though. If a player would draw a card, that player skips that draw instead. So not just their draw step. Anytime they would draw a card. So if Ristic they have a Studies, Sphinx, Sphinxes, sorry. yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the beginning of each end step, each player sacrifices a permanent unless they discard a card. That's brutal. Because you, if you play cards out of your hand... You also don't have any cards in your hand because you're not replacing them with draw, yeah. card draw. And if you hold them, you're going to start discarding them until you have no cards in hand. Yeah. And Elsha is one of those decks that you're going to have a lot of cards with flashback on them. So discarding them into your graveyard isn't the worst. It's still part of your hand in a way. You it's can just still in your use graveyard them. Yeah. Instead. yeah. So you're, if, if everyone's losing a full card, if they have to discard, you're losing half a card. And uh, you're gaining that other half back by having the top card of your library being able to be played. There's other stuff like Spirit of the Labyrinth and things like that, which Mm -hmm. kind of puts a a damper on the amount of card draw everybody else can have, but you can still play the top card of your library. So I think there's a lot of ways to use and abuse Elsha that could Mm -hmm. be very powerful. It's costly at five mana. She costs quite a bit. Um, But I I played the turn after you played with Dalkanori. Sure. (laughs) Now everything has (laughs) You don't need both, but yeah. Um, But I like that card. I think think it's powerful. I don't think it's like a top tier commander or anything. No, I think it's a lot of fun. It's definitely one of those decks where if you want to go a storm route or something, you can definitely get there. Uh, And and, and Elsha having prowess, I think, is really important too. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the rest of the Jeskai flashback deck. So now that you know all the new cards, there were 17 new cards in the deck, including Elsha. That's 89 reprints, but 21 of them are basic lands, so we're left with 68 reprints in the deck. A lot of good cards, though. And yeah. on the box, we have, of course, the big singer himself, Savin, the Chronoclasm. Uh, we talked about him earlier. Yeah. He basically can help you copy cards out of your deck. And we're going to... Th- this is, again, one of those decks oh, that's... Yeah, I have a graveyard, sorry. It's a deck that's very, very much themed around being able to recur stuff out of your graveyard and to get extra value out of spells. So it is Yeah, specifically recur non-creatures out of your graveyard, yeah, right? It's yeah, not yeah. like a Marin that's specifically recurring creatures. Yeah, again, I think Elsha is who you should run as the commander out of the box. I agree. Um, okay, now it's time for... Stats. 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 We've seen all these decks from a stats perspective be very well designed, and I think this one is right up there. There's 10 ramp cards in the deck. One of them is uh, on a land. There are 8 to 9 card draw spells. Depends on how you count, like, looting and cantrips. Yeah. And, but somewhere in the right range, right? We want around 10. It's very close. There are 4 board wipes. There are five single target removal spells, which is Ooh. interesting because we've seen a lot higher in the other deck. Yeah, uh, I would say that this deck is doing so much with its own board that it probably doesn't care as much about other people's boards, and it's going to create something that's unassailable or like very like you know reactive. So you don't may not need that single target removal if like a counter spell esque effect can be that removal for you instead. Yeah, I prefer the morph deck with just a slightly higher amount. Well, it'll remain to be seen whether the other two decks have a lot or not. Oh, not to mention some of the single target removal can be cast twice. Oh, uh, that's actually a really good point. Maybe yeah. that's why there's a little less because they're like, well, if you get this card, you can cast it twice. Oh, you I didn't get it even back think from about that. Yeah. yeah, and you already have card advantage off the top of your deck. Eh, who knows? Okay. Uh, speaking of cards that flashback or can be cast from the graveyard, not all of them have flashback. 22. So that's, again, right up in that range of where you want to be for the synergy of the deck. And, of course, it's a Spells Matters deck, so there are 14 cards that care about the way you cast spells, if you're casting spells, and if you're going to get any extra bonus or effect from them. So I like the stats. The stacks look good as far as how they line up. Um, Now we're going to run down some of the highlights of the reprints in the deck as with the morph deck. And Mm -hmm. moving forward with the other decks, we're going to do the same thing. We can't go through every card. We're just going to run down the highlights. However, 
If you look in the more info box below this video, you will see a link that will have the entirety of the deck list, so you can check it out if you want to. Yes, please do. Let us know what you think of the deck. Okay, so the first card that we're going to talk about, this was previewed by Crypta de Mana, which is a Brazilian YouTube channel. Oh, that's awesome. And my, this is a my first Mana Crypt, by the way, is called Crypta de Mana. Oh, really? Because yeah, you have a, cheaper. You have the, a Portuguese version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's so funny. <laughs> um, so this card... I think was in need of reprint. It's a very good card from cons. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, it's somewhere in the seven, $8 range at the time. Obviously these numbers are going to fluctuate once everybody knows about the, yeah. the reprints, but it's one of my favorite clones. Yep. It's clever impersonator two blue blue for a shapeshifter creature. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any non land permanent Planes on the battlefield. Yep. Our enchantments. Enchantments. Yeah. yeah. It's very powerful to be able to clone non creature things. Yeah. Yeah. And this was getting up there in price. So it's a really good reprint. Yeah, I'm glad people realize that this is a card that we all like. And clones, I think, one of my favorite kinds of cards on the show. And Clever Impersonator covers a big landscape of that. All right, this next guy was previewed by our good friend Tappy Toe Claws. It's Rao Zarek. The two in the blue and a red Planeswalker with four loyalty that can plus one to tap a permanent and then untap another target permanent. So great if you have mana rocks and you want to lock down something a little mm -hmm. bit. His minus two deals three damage to any target, but the minus seven, which I've seen happen actually probably more than any other Planeswalker <laughs> ultimate in Magic, now that I think about it. You get I've a, personally ultimated at least a few times. Yeah, yeah, you get to flip five coins and you take an extra turn after this for each coin that comes up heads. So, so you get somewhere around two and a half two and extra, extra turns, turns yeah. which is usually game winning. Yeah, that's that's quite a lot. That's expropriate levels of ridiculous. We've seen two decks now. There's two Planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very possible that all of the decks have a Planeswalker based on that thing, maybe. Um, Rouser, which is very also, exciting. Yeah, I, I like these. I like this idea. There's planes. There's so many planeswalkers now. Of course, they're going to match into a lot of these decks. And these are decent value ones. This is, you know, a, again around a seven dollar card. So yep. I like that. Um, another card in the deck is a white staple. One of the most played white cards. It's Sun Titan, heavy hitter. Four white white for a six six giant with vigilance. But <clears throat> when Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return a target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less. From your graveyard to the battlefield. Pretty neat. Super powerful, uh, being able to recur stuff like that. Fetch lands. It's really just really good with lands because it's a way for white to ramp. Yeah, um, and six mana, unfortunately. But still a way for white to ramp. Or it's repeatable, too, because yeah. if you can attack, then you can do it again. Well, as soon as it enters the battlefield, that's why the Titans are so good, is that yeah. they come in and do something as well as when they attack. Um, sometimes there's a bit of a nonbo with the deck because you have so many spells that cannot be targeted by it. But in terms of just a good reprint, this is a card that if you don't have a copy or even if you have one, having an extra never will hurt. I mean, most decks with white do want a Sun Titan or at least won't be embarrassed to have it in the deck. Yeah, no one's going to look at you weird when you play Sun Titan. They're, yeah, everyone's going to be like, yep, that's well, a card. That's a card. <laughs> any of, actually, any of the Titans. <laughs> um, next up, this is sort of one of the big, I, I would say, win conditions of the deck. Uh, Stormherd, eight white white for a sorcery. You create X, one, one white Pegasus creature tokens with flying, where X is your life total. Mm -hmm. Oof. Imagine flashing that off the top of your deck. That it's is, speed. oh my gosh. Yeah, right? Like 10 oh, mana. Oh, yeah, and then you just swing with it on the next turn because they didn't see it coming. And they all have flying. Oh, <laughs> you're that's definitely brutal. Gonna hit them with Hi, it. I make 40 flyers. Yeah, hopefully you're at 40 life. Even if you make 20, it should be good enough. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, the next is a group of cards, and we did see these in the morph deck, so my assertion here is it's possible that all four of the decks have mm -hmm. these four cards, which I think is sweet. It's a suite of lands, Ash Barrens, Exotic Orchard, and Myriad Landscape. They're all uh, they're all in this deck. And then Soul Ring as well, which of is course. always in the decks. But I think like... Soul Ring, Command Tower, they always put them in there. Yeah, that's true. Command Tower, I'm going to assume, is in all the decks too. But these three lands specifically are lands that I put in most of my decks. Mm -hmm. And so I like seeing... You know, when we saw them in the Morph deck, well, we don't know. But now that we've seen all three of them in both decks, I think there's a decent chance they're in all of them, which is yeah. pretty cool. I love Myriad Landscape. It's a way for every single deck to have access to some kind of ramp. Um, it's not the most efficient card in the world, but it still does the job. And Ash Barrens, like, it, it, this came out in the four color decks originally to help you basic land cycle to get the colors you need. But just very good in general, just for one, to basic land cycle it. And if you're a deck that uses colorless mana... Or if you already have your too. colors, now I can just play it as my land and yeah. not bother with it. Yeah, really, really good. Uh this next card was one of our most winning cards when we did our stats episodes. Really? It's Burnished Heart. Three mana oh, yeah. for an artifact. That makes sense. Two, two elk. You can pay three, sacrifice it, and then search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. It's like an expensive explosive vegetation, but it's on a creature, can be recurred, could come back with Sun Titan, for instance. Right. And 
the fact that you can get two extra lands into play in Jeskai colors, for example, non-green colors, it just turns out very, very powerful. Just getting extra lands on the battlefield is something that is more likely to determine the outcome of a game than almost any other play you can make. Yeah. We usually find whoever's got the most lands at the end, they're the most likely to win. Yep, they can do the most stuff. Brush yep. heart, put in every mono red deck I can build. This next one, when we played the decks... This, this card takes over the entire table. Freaking MVP over here. Yeah. Because of their pre-cons, they don't have a lot of very specific removal because something like Zatalpa, Primal Dawn, is going to need a little extra help to get rid of it. Six white white for a 4-8 Elder Dinosaur with Flying, Double Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Indestructible. <laughs> it's that, Just really everything. that Trample and Indestructible yeah. that makes it like ridiculous yeah with the double strike vigilance to like it just basically is just like this is a god creature it's just gonna whomp you there's not a ton of exile type effects there are a few there's not a ton of like negative x negative x type effects right. there are a few so within the environment of the precons we found that when zatalpa came out it was just a lightning rod card <laughs> where everyone wanted to steal it copy it they were scared of you having it because they just couldn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of ways around it. They yeah. couldn't attack you when you had it. It's a very powerful card. It's so hard to block, and yeah. it's so hard to attack into as well as a 4-8 that's indestructible. To, I mean, jeez. Any way to pump it in any way yeah. or whatever just makes it into a very scary card. The 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 um, the um shapeshifter card from the morph deck, the, the, it stays as a 7-5, but it oh, becomes right. the thing. That is now a 7-5 double strike flying. flying and trample. Yeah, so it hits for 14. Ugh. Yeah, that stuff is brutal. Pretty good. Uh, um, the next card is a Craig Blanchett special and very good in this deck. <laughs> it's Talran Sky Summoner. Two blue blue, two two legendary merfolk wizard. But whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a two two blue drake creature with flying. So anytime you cast an instant or sorcery, you get a two two flyer. Yeah, pretty good. Spells matter. There's going to be a ton of spells in this deck, and if you're casting any of them, you're getting extra value, and that's sort of how this deck needs to stay alive as well, is find some way to interact with the rest of the board, because usually it's sort of like one of those, like, I'm just going to keep looking at the top card of my library, and I don't care what everyone else is doing yet. I mean, and it works with all your flashback stuff, so those yeah. create two two twos, which gives you extra value. Yep. Uh, and finally, a card that I somehow forgot the name of after I saw it played all weekend at the Mythic Invitational. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Faithless Looting. Uh, I believe this is newish art, too. It's uh, for one red, you, it's a sorcery, you draw two cards, then discard two cards, and you can flash it back for two in a red to do the same. So actually, this is quote-unquote card disadvantage because you're drawing two, discarding two, and using a card to draw those cards. But in a deck like this where there's tons of flashback or graveyard matters cards, it's very, very good. It fuels you up, gets you going. Yeah, and can work really well with Savine or things like Talrand and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, well... We're going to stop there. We're not going to name any more cards, but we did want to say that just the reprints in the deck, again, there are 68 cards being reprinted. We added up the value. This is before anybody else knows about them. Around $77. That's not counting the new cards. Pretty darn good. Yeah, and we know those new cards are potentially going to be valuable as well. I, I could see Elsha getting up there. I mean, Jeskai is one of those really popular colors for people that like to brew, and so mm -hmm. I think that always increases interest as well. Yeah, I think the value is is definitely so far from what we've seen a lot better than last year. Hopefully, people are not quite as upset about it. Yeah, because the reprint value is uh, higher, and then you know you just throw in the new cards as gravy. It's pretty good. It is pretty gravy. All okay, right. let's talk about this deck and how it plays. Uh, we both had a chance to play it a couple times. Well, I will say that for having as much interaction as it does, and we played it, and we've seen it played, it does not move very quickly. At least not in the beginning. Yeah, I think that's the big takeaway everybody felt when they played this deck, which is. It takes a little bit to get started. And you don't have that much access to ramp as well. You know, you've got card drawn, a few other things, but that doesn't help when the other pre-cons around the table are doing nutty things and, and getting tons of advantage much earlier than your five drop commanders. Yeah, it can it can very much feel like you're on turn six or seven and everybody else just has more stuff out than you do. And you have some value engines and, and things that you're setting up, but mm -hmm. they don't actually impact the board. And so you can feel like you're in, you know, in a scary position, you know, earlier in the game because you just haven't impacted what's going on as much. Yeah, you might need to use your cards to do, have more political favors done instead of being able to just do your own thing because this is the deck that plays with its own board quite a lot. You're looking at your own library, you're trying to look at your graveyard, you're always trying to think of what you're going to do. And so I think the sequencing is pretty complicated as well, yeah. if, especially if you're using Elsha as your main commander. A lot of choices because it's like, well, do I Faithless Looting, find out what happens, then I could Faithless Looting again. Right. Do I flash back a spell I already cast or do I cast a new spell? Do I get Elsha out? Uh, and then wait till next turn and hope I get something good off the top of my library. Yeah. There's a lot of decision points. I like that. It's also not a clear like win condition. Yeah, I think that's kind of one of the bigger issues. It has a little bit of trouble. It seems like 
closing out the game. Mm. Not that it can't, because it can sort of, we saw in some games we played where the value engine got set up and it got real explosive to where it could finish, but there's not a clear way to finish. You right. kind of you kind of outvalue your opponents, grind them out. Yeah, but you do get to have some of those explosive turns with Elsha where you just do something crazy off the top of your library, and then you have a whole untap step and turn to either protect it or just keep building on it. So yeah, a lot of it is predicated on like what you get on top of your deck because this deck is not built in with a lot of the things we talked about as far as being able to manipulate your the top of your library. So yeah. when you play it as a precon. You're at the mercy of RNG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is cool, but at the same time, like, it's hard to say the deck always plays one way because it just really depends. Did you get, like, if you get a land every time out there, yeah, it's going to play totally different. You will get a lot of value off of playing it, though. Yeah. And it'll feel good at times, just not, I would say, in the first, like, five, six turns. I mean, there are some cool things once you can kind of get, like, Burning Vengeance and some other things going where you can... The gutter snipes. Feel very clever, and you can take out the whole table sometimes. So it definitely has that capability. Yep. All right. All right, so make sure you check back with us tomorrow because we're going to be unveiling the deck list for all of the rest of the Commander 2019 pre-cons one day at a time. Uh, so this is Tuesday. So we'll still have Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, two, two more, decks. more decks. So many more cards, so many more cool reprints. We'll be talking about all of them as well as just going over what the deck's all about and hopefully getting you excited about because I will say we played these decks they're great. They're super They're fun. Super, super fun. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait to tell you guys about it. All right. Our editors are Ashlyn Rose and Jake Boss. Special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer for the Living Card animations that start and end our show and are behind us. Thanks, Jeffrey. Oh, the, man, it's raining today. It's it's raining. I would like that. It's currently like 90 degrees in LA. That's so. actually, I listen, I'm from Oregon and I'm sick of rain from having grown up there. Too, but at the same yeah. time, I would take it today. It's like 97 hours. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. <laughs> we'll see you all tomorrow and Thursday for the rest of the Commander 2019 Deck Techs. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>